Hello everyone, Taras here. Today is another episode of our running series, What is a Coral? And today is super exciting because we're gonna get to talk about arguably the most classic coral family. When you think of coral, a lot of people's minds goes to maybe a you know, cartoon from your childhood like SpongeBob. And you might imagine corals as these branched, you know, almost tree-like classical hard looking things. That's pretty much the family we're discussing today. This is the Postulaporidae. This is a family of SPS or small polyp stony corals that includes uh, some of the harder yet most recognized coral uh, genera, Postulapora, which some people have very limited success keeping, and they have the Madracus, which is pretty much very, very rare if uh, relatively unkept in the hobby because it's so difficult uh, to harvest from the Atlantic reefs now. But it also includes the Stylopora and the Seriatopora, the bird's nest corals, which are considered great beginner SPS because even though they come with all the traditional challenges that comes with keeping an SPS, they're a little bit more tolerant, adaptable, and have been in the hobby for generations and decades by now. So the strains we have can and will set up shop in your aquarium if, fingers crossed, everything's doing all right. Before I segue to Eli, let's talk a little bit about the postulapority in the wild and why there's so many fundamental challenges with keeping SPS in general. Now, for the most part, this is highly generalized, which is our bread and butter on this show. We have uh, the Postulaporidae inhabiting these open water reefs. So they're used to full strength salinity. They're up higher in the higher levels of the reef, receiving higher levels of light intensity than some of the less light uh, prone corals. And they are receiving constant oceanic flow. They're re receiving lots of flow from the tides, from the winds, and with that, they're constantly getting dosed with oceanic bacteria, fish eggs, microalgae, and of course, a constant uh, flux of clean seawater with everything that uh, comes with it. For that reason, SPS really thrives in what we call a state of dynamic stability, which is absolutely counterintuitive. You know, dynamic, everything's changing. We're constantly getting more alkalinity and calcium getting refreshed in the system. But at the same time, we constantly have nitrogenous waste, nitrates and phosphates constantly getting diluted. So for that reason, SPS can be very difficult at first to keep alive in the hobby because you have to go very counterintuitive. You have to essentially take this glass box, which is sitting in a finite position, and simulate this huge flowing expanse of oceanic water ripping through the top part of a reef. So to do that, we have lots of flow provided by power heads and by our pumps. We have lots of water changes to keep down our phosphates and our nitrates. And then we can dose compounds such as calcium and alkalinity to make sure that there is always a surplus of these available so that these corals can build up their calcareous and aragonite skeletons. And we can also dose them with things like coral feeds and frozen feeds to give them that slight little boost that they might also need. When it comes to the specifics of how to keep this really enchanting uh, yet challenging family of corals alive in the aquarium, we're gonna check in with Eli and all of his knowledge in the trenches. Hey there, Eli again to give you an up close look at the Pasilaporidae, bird's nest corals. As Taras was saying, this kind of tends to be the archetype of an SPS coral. Definitely one of the more beginner friendly SPS corals that we like to suggest for some of the newer aquarists. Specifically, uh, once we get into the Stylophora genus of corals, these happen to be one of the easiest SPS to keep. I have a couple examples here, one of a purple stylo and one of one that's called like a rainbow stylo that's got kind of a teal color to it. And these are two really neat pieces that tend to be one of the most easygoing SPS corals for any aquarium. Like Taras was mentioning earlier, they definitely can benefit from the stability of alkalinity and calcium in the aquarium, somewhere between seven and 10 DKH for alkalinity and above 360 parts per million calcium. Definitely where you wanna to be to keep some of these uh, small pop stony corals. And as stable as you can keep these numbers, the more happy your corals are gonna be in the long run. So. In contrast to maybe Acroporas and Montiporas, what makes the bird's nest corals kind of a, a little bit more interesting in some people's eyes is they tend to add a little more flow to the aquarium, a little more flowy appearance, whereas like the, the actual polyps on maybe an Acropora are very small and hard to see with the naked eye. Most of the bird's nest corals, when you look up close, get a nice flowiness to them because the polyps are so extended from the coral itself. It makes them kind of pleasant to look at and uh, definitely adds a different appearance to your aquarium. Bird's nest corals, one of the things to keep in mind in aquariums is they're actually a brooding type of coral which is an interesting reproductive strategy that sometimes comes to be a type of a nuisance in the aquarium so this really only applies to the postulaporas like this green one up front in specific 
but these corals can actually sexually reproduce in aquariums pretty easily and which basically ends up in this coral releasing uh, little baby corals that will settle in the tank and this generally occurs once the coral becomes a certain size this can be a little bit of a nuisance because you might end up with pasilloporas in different areas of your aquarium that you didn't place them after initially adding one to the tank and the pasis tend to have a decent sting to them so uh, this can kind of run into issues of stinging other corals if this is not desired. Again, this usually only applies to the Pasilloporas in specific, whereas the Stylos and the bird's nests like the Seriatopora genus of corals uh, generally don't do this same sort of thing. In contrast to some of the other SPS, bird's nest corals tend to be some of the fastest growing, so they can be really rewarding because they, they add a lot of different textures and colors to the aquarium and generally grow pretty quickly when they're happy in your aquarium. As to Ross mentioned, uh, higher flow and higher light are a definite need with these corals. Whereas they can probably tolerate some lower light, they definitely tend to grow better and show their better colorations when they're placed uh, closer to the lights in the aquarium and placed somewhere where they can get an adequate amount of flow at all hours of the day. As always, if you guys have any questions feel free to let us know in the comments and if you want to request any corals for us to do in the future please let us know check us out at osachoice.com for all of your aquarium keeping needs and check us out in store uh, to see what we have to offer